everybody, welcome to Emily Kate Made This. I am Emily Kate and I'm coming to you from Berlin in Germany. Welcome to my knitting slash sewing slash general, general YouTube, general crafty YouTube channel. Here I talk about knitting, sewing, vintage things, yarn, all the lovely things. And you can find me on Instagram and on, I was going to say YouTube, obviously, um, coffee as Emily Kate made this. Wow, my brain just turned off for a second there. <laughs> Let's have some caffeine. So, you may have already noticed the finished object. That is before your very eyes. I have been knitting on this jumper, cardigan, monogamous, 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 <laughs> only this for the last like week and a half, 10 days or so. So this is basically everything, knitting-wise, we will talk about. I have a couple of things, yarn, knitting, project, future plan related, but this is the star of this episode, because it took me all my brain power to do. <laughs> this is the Forest Berry Jacket by Fable Knitwear. I will stand up, but I will try and add some actual video and pictures because, as per usual, I'm in a very cramped space with a table and a plant, so moving around is not always easy. So, I will first point out the obvious. Yes, it's a square neckline, and I don't own any square necked tees or boat necks or anything basically. I have this issue with all of my vintage knits because I like to make it quite a wide neckline or a square neckline because I think it's flattering, but then I don't own anything that I can wear underneath. <laughs> so I always end up with this unflattering and really irritating t-shirt or dress situation. So. My mission this summer, because summer is when the sewing mojo returns, I want to try and make some clothes, some tops that can deal with this situation. I have yet to, to discover a pattern that I can do this with, but that is the plan. But anyway, back to the cardigan. This is knitted in campus to ply wool. It is a wool that I purchased in just wondering where I've put the leftovers. Hang on. This is a wool that I purchased in Stockholm last year, in April, and it is such a nice colour. I love this colour. And my mission was when I purchased this, purchased this yarn, I wanted to make this cardigan. And I was really nervous because I wasn't sure if I would have enough yarn, if I would be able to make the right size, what the gauge would be, la la la. Turns out I did not need to worry at all. I've got about 80 grams, I think, left. So this was, I wrote this down. I'm not very organized today. This cardigan weighs 240 grams. And I know that when I weighed these, I had a little over 300 grams, so... Yes, in April 2023, I purchased three balls of that yarn, and it was 300 grams, but it was a little bit over uh, that. And when I weighed the leftovers, it was 89 grams left over, and this cardigan in total weighs 240 grams. So I used 720 meters. I am still doing my stash busting, kind of. <laughs> I'm still writing down all the information of yarn in, yarn out, so I still have an idea of what's going on. I just haven't really been doing any videos about it because I've had one project a month. It It's not a significant, enough thing to do an entire episode on, like stash busting for March 
I did a stripy tee for 118 grams. It's not really <laughs> worth an entire video. So I am still recording it and I will still update you at the end of the year, but unless something significant happens, I won't make a big deal. So yes, I was humming and hiring for a good long while about this cardigan because lots of things were completely throwing me off. I knitted the sleeves first so that I could use them as a gauge swatch and the pattern is 21 stitches per 10 centimeters on four millimeter needles. But when I was watching Hel Helena's YouTube channel, she did an episode about this a good few years ago and she made it in Ask by Hillesvag and she said that she recommended you go down a needle size because the wool it's different, it's not super wash, it's not drapey, and it's, it comes out bigger. So I did, I went down needle size, because this yarn is very close to Ask. I think Ask was 115 grams. Um, no. Oh gosh. 300, oh, I can't remember. It's very close to Ask, but not quite the same. So I kind of roughly assumed it would work in a similar way. I'm not entirely convinced it did, but I knitted size one sleeves and went down needle size. And the gauge when I, before I blocked it was 22 stitches. I should have left my notes here, but I didn't. But when I blocked it, the sleeves went to 24. So it came out a lot tighter. So then I panicked that the entire cardigan would come out too small, so I did size 2 for the body. I don't know that I needed to, but I am happy with the fit, so I'll... I think it's alright. Because I did start worrying that I would need size 3 for it to be the correct circumference based off of that gauge. But then I remembered <laughs> these sleeves are knitted in the round and I'm a tighter knitter when I knit small circumference in the round. So I assumed since all of this is knitted flat, I will have one pearl side and that will definitely loosen up my gauge. So I kept with size two and I used 3.75 millimeters for my knitting hand and 3.5 for my purling hand or purling side so that I wouldn't get the rowing out and that the gauge would be evened out. And I got 22 stitches in 10 centimeters before and after blocking, which is even stranger because this changed by two and this didn't really change at all. <laughs> but that's fine. So it came out tighter. Like, so it would come out, the garment came out smaller than the intended size two, but that's fine for me. I already kind of knew that it would do that. So I didn't want size one because I thought it would come out too small. Size two, could be, could be too big, but going off of my gauge, I thought hopefully it will shrink enough that it will be the right size. And hallelujah, it did. So I'm very pleased. I am still getting used to these kind of mock puff sleeves. They are puff sleeves. It's just, this is a modern vintage knit, a modern take on vintage, and it's knitted bottom up flat with raglan increases and then puff sleeves and obviously I have never done any of that and I was panicking but excited at the same time. I wanted to try out this style but that was before I had knitted actual vintage garments. Now I have knitted vintage garments I really like how they look when they're seamed in and it looks kind of weird to have a raglan I was kind of uncomfortable with the idea that it was a raglan instead of a set in sleeve, but I think I'm okay with it. I'm not looking at you, sorry, I'm looking at the screen where I can see what I'm pointing at. <laughs> but I think I like it. I, I would probably say I prefer the look of a set in sleeve, like actually seaming it in, but I'm glad that I tried it. And I will try it again, I think, but 
I, I'm still not sure how I feel about the poofy sleeves. I don't know. It's basically a bunch of increases that you then decrease out at the top and I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm, I'm uncertain. What do you think? I don't dislike it. I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so other than the fit and the gauge issues, not issues, but me worrying about whether or not to do size two, size three, how it would fit, etc., etc. The other thing that put me off, that was I was procrastinating knitting this, was this raglan situation. And then I got, if you were here last time, I got very stressed. All of this seems to be coming out wrong. Stress is not the right word either. I got overwhelmed by rib, rib stitch. Everything I was doing involved ribbing. I needed to do ribbing for the sleeves of this, ribbing for the body of that, ribbing for this, and I just didn't want to do any more ribbing. But eventually I pulled myself together and I finished off the rib of this cardigan. So the last time we were talking I had only done half of the rib on this body and I had done the sleeves up to here. I'll put my cup down and then I can use my hands properly. I had done both sleeves up to here, then they were left aside on a piece of scrap yarn and then I, once I got to the body I then attached them and joined and knitted up. So that's where I was the last time I saw you, so I have done a lot since, hence why I was only knitting on this. And I hadn't actually realised that this is all cabled. In my head I just knew there were bobble stitches and I just had to do a few bobbles. Hadn't actually looked at the pattern and realised there's loads of different cable stitches and bobbles. So although this isn't difficult, it did involve brain power and a cable needle. And Helena doesn't use a cable uh, needle, she just holds the yarn to the back. But I just can't do it. Every time I try, the way I move my yarn or my needles, I just unpick and drop all my stitches. So <clears throat> I have to use a cable needle and it is such a faff. But I did it. I did it. And it's only a small section. So if I had known there were cables, I'm not sure that I would have done it, done the pattern. But the fact that I'd already done the ribbing and the sleeves, I was going to continue. I just don't really like cables. I, I don't even know if I would like them if I could hold yarn at the back because it just stresses me out but anyhow, anyhow, <laughs> anywho, I did it and I am very proud. I was in such a like, crafting rut that I was stuck and I was getting very frustrated that I couldn't get out of it. So perseverance is key. I just persevered and once I had done the ribbing and got onto the the textured part, it was much more fun. And I did, as you can see, succeed and finish it. I will get a little closer so you can see my bubbles. The buttons I used are some kind of shell button I purchased last year because I did in fact cast this on in December and then abandoned it until like mid-March. <laughs> but I only purchased 10 buttons and I am missing this final button. So I have ordered, they, they come in a pack of 10 so I have ordered some more but I'm certain I will use green buttons because I love green. So I'm waiting for them. Then this will be officially completed and I I don't know if I'll use the leftover yarn to make some kind of hat I'm not sure if I'll have enough yarn but I might make a hat or I will add it to some colour work I'm thinking a green like different shades of green bunny ear jumper or a rainbow 
But basically every time I see any yarn, they're the two patterns that I just want to make again and again in different colours. So I was concerned there would be too much bunching because if you look at the pattern on Ravelry, there is quite a lot of excess fabric. And I have seen a few people mention it. I think if I think raglans do tend to do that sometimes. Um, some people redistribute fabric into different places, so more fabric at the back or more fabric at the front or take out more stitches. Since I was already playing around with the gauge, I thought, we'll see, we'll see what happens. And it's okay, I don't think there's too much excess fabric, but there is some. And it's also quite a stiff yarn, but I imagine, like bulky yarn, if you know what I mean. Like, it, it's not a drapey yarn, is what I'm trying to say. It's very warm, and it's 24 degrees in this room, so I am very, very warm. <laughs> Might have to take it off, in fact. Um, yeah, I'm going to take this off because I'm melting. Oh, but now I just have some like rubbish t-shirt on. <laughs> but it's too hot to wear a cardigan. I should have worn a knee-made -made top or something, or dress. But hey, ho. This is a very chaotic episode, isn't it? My mouth and my words and my brain are not communicating. So let's speed this up and move on. That is my finished object. Did I cover everything? I think so. I don't really have much to show of my next one, my next project, but I did just want to mention I have cast on for another project. This is going to be the Golden Oak Tank, but instead of a tank it will be a t-shirt. And I am about three rows in. The only issue is that I got some major hand pain after doing this many rows. And not my usual hand pain. I usually get that a different kind of hand pain. This one was more like a finger, like a nerve one that went straight through my little finger all the way up. So I did put that one aside for the last two days because I had hoped that I could get the lace portion done and then knit on the body on my trip to Sweden next week. But I'm not sure it's going to happen. I will cast, not cast on, I will continue today and see how my hands are doing. But if they, if they really hurt, I will have to put this aside for another time. But hopefully I can get the lace done because then I can just do smooth sailing of knit stitches on the aeroplane and that would be And I even, I even managed to add about 18 rows or so to my abandoned project. I did try to add this project to my Finish It February list, but I absolutely did not. This is the Venezia Shawl by Hohi Locatelli that I have been trying to knit for forever, it feels like. Uh, I, I purchased it over a year ago and it could even be two years. I think it's one year. I don't know anymore, but basically, this is deceivingly complicated for me. I thought it was a little bit of lace and then just some rib, but actually it's a combination of you twist the purl stitch on one row and then you knit through the back loop of the other row alternating and some of the rows have increases and some don't and it's not a re it's not a lace repetition lace repeat that is easily memorizable i am so struggling today with words it's not easy to memorize and as you can see my brain is not particularly in gear so it takes me a very long time and i have the way that the pattern is laid out it has this diamond pattern on one page and the rest of the instructions like the first part of the row and the middle part of the row on another page like five pages back and it stresses me out I don't print them I have them on my tablet so going back and forth was driving me insane so I have my phone on with one half of the pattern open and then my tablet with the other half so it's just a faff and then having my brain not quite keep up with twist the pearl here 
do a normal purl here, twist the stitch here, it's, it's taking a while, but it is growing and I really hope it looks a lot nicer when it's blocked because unblocked it doesn't look really that great but I have seen a blocked version and it was very nice so my hopes are very high and I really hope I can get this finished in the next month I really hope because I'm so fed up of seeing it abandoned in a bag and I occasionally pick it up and then go oh, I'd rather do literally anything else so this is the month this is it I have to get the willpower to do this because I want it done and speaking of procrastination I have been trying to get the motivation and desire to sew because I have a whole bunch of stuff that I want to sew like t-shirts because everything I own that isn't knitted or a dress is some really old t-shirt that looks this rubbish and I want home made handmade creations but it's amazing how much you can get done when you are trying you're like your brain is avoiding actually doing the thing that you want to do <laughs> I want to sew but I have to do a lot of adjustments to get the fit right for the bodice I can make skirts until the cows come home I love making skirts I can make sleeveless dresses it's fine but once you put sleeves on it it all goes horrendously wrong and I can't move my arms forward I get stuck I have to do a whole bunch of adjustments and learn how to do adjustments to the arms eye to the shoulders to the arms and I just don't enjoy it it's weirdly easier to do it with knitting and maths than it is with sewing and geometry and I am getting through my mending pile quite well because by avoiding doing all the geometry and calculations for sewing I seem to just be picking up all these mending projects that I've been hiding for a good year in the corner of my room I have fixed um, trousers, I fixed holes, I've mended all kinds of things to avoid doing this maths and I even found a cashmere jumper that the neckline I think might have been eaten by some kind of moss or something I don't know but my husband had a cashmere jumper when we lived in Ireland and it just got shoved in his wardrobe and I found it and thought, this was about two years ago, I found it and thought, oh, I can cut it up and I can make it into something. Then it got shoved in said bag, in said corner and abandoned. And on my mission to try and distract myself from doing what I should be doing, I found this jumper and decided I've always wanted to learn how to unravel a jumper. So that was the chosen specimen. And I enthusiastically cut up the sides and thought ah oh, I'll just cut this part I made a bit of a faux pas and ruined a little bit but I then did discover the problem and I did manage to salvage some of the yarn I'll try and put a picture of what it did look like everything is in plastic bags now because of my recent bug disaster you can watch my last episode if you want to know what I'm talking about I have three of these navy blue cashmere balls there are a bazillion knots tied into this this is deceivingly innocent this cashmere is so delicate and so fine and so wibbly wobbly can you see how fine this is i i imagine this is lace weight i know that i should turn this into a skein wash it and reball in but to do this took me seven hours and there's a lot of 
tiny little knots that I tied because the yarn broke in a few places. There were holes in a few places, so it didn't quite just smoothly come from one jumper turn into a magical ball. There was a lot of stop and starts and tying of knots and stress. <laughs> I have a ball times three. Hmm. I did not write it down in my magical book of information. That's annoying. I have something like 250 grams or something. I'll try and write it on the screen if I remember to weigh it. I do. I did measure it and I was really surprised that there wasn't that much <laughs> after all that work. And it's, I think, lace weight and I don't really know what to do now. I think I'll do a swatch of some kind, like a sleeve or, because I don't do actual swatches. That's madness. No, no. <laughs> I'll go straight into a jumper or whatever it is I decide to try and make. I'll do a sleeve and then block that and see what the gauge is and see what it looks like. And that will help me determine what to do because it's really dusty, dirty, like, dirty is maybe a bit extreme. I don't remember washing this jumper, but I do know when I was winding this, there were just loads of dust, poofs of, loads of poofs of dust, lots and lots and lots of dust and tiny, tiny fibers. And my entire room was covered in thick blue layers, like all my plants, every surface. I, I felt like I'd been smoking for about 20 years and it was horrible so I know that I should wash it but the idea of hand winding that into skeins for like hours and hours and hours and then washing it and then winding it all over again I'm not convinced that I want to do that. So I might just knit whatever it is I choose and then block it then. <laughs> and maybe I'll knit it outside on the balcony so that the dust can go out there instead. I'm not sure. But that was what I did to procrastinate. And I'll see what I make. I am running out of battery, so I will have to be fast now. But I just wanted to end on talking about some happy mail that I got because I have some lovely, lovely friends and they sent me some lovely, lovely things. So back in December, I became rather obsessed with looking at Swedish Christmas things, <laughs> Christmas wall hangings and uh, anything Swedish, basically. If you've been here a while, you know, I have an obsession with Sweden and that is why I'm going for the third time next week. Anyway, my lovely friend Miranda won this for me online and I love it. I will put some footage in if that didn't show anything, but there are gnomes eating rice porridge and she's spinning and she's got wool and it is delightful. It's from the 1970s. I did put it in the freezer but I don't know if I can wash it because I'm scared that I'll ruin it. And it needs to be ironed in some way. But yeah, I'm just scared to ruin it. But at Christmas, I would like to hang this up because it's so cute. 
Oh, my bread is ready. I will be back. Hello. And she also lovingly sent me some miscellaneous yarn that she found in a charity shop, so, or thrift store. So, I am very excited. I don't know what it is, but it's like Gotland Grey. Let's go with Swedish. <laughs> it's lovely. So that's going to definitely go into something colour work or like lace stripey vintagey niceness. I'm not sure of the gauge but I, I would imagine it's like the sport weight, the typical sport weight. It looks like it. I don't know, I can never tell. Like you can see me like it's maybe, maybe lace, maybe sport. <laughs> I have no idea but it will be knitted up into something lovely. So thank you Miranda. And I also got another lovely present. And this is from a woman that I met via Instagram. I don't know if she watches my YouTube, but if you do, hello and thank you. <laughs> she went to this uh, yarn festival that I can't pronounce that was held in Stockholm last month and she purchased some Gotland locks and I really regretted not buying any when I was in Gotland last year and it's one of those silly things where it, it's a regret but it sounds very dramatic like I bitterly regret not buying this but I really did regret not buying it and I mentioned this to her and she so kindly purchased some and sent them to me and I'm so happy <laughs> hopefully the sun isn't reflecting too much I should I get some out? I'm so excited. Oh, it's so, oh, it's so nice. I have a half plan for this. I saw, and I believe it's from the same wool festival that this was purchased at, that they did some kind of video, but it's all in Swedish and I can't understand anything they're saying, but they basically made this lamp, like a felted lamp, and they put the locks into the felted material so that when you turn that lamp on, or when you put the candle in the lamp, it's not just a lampshade of felt, it has these curly whirly locks in. Am I explaining that? I don't know. But it looks really cool. So that's one thing that I have planned. But otherwise, I'm not sure what I want to do with them. I love looking at them. I could put them in a glass jar and just stare at them. <laughs> but do you have any ideas? I would love to know if any of you have used these for anything. What did you use it for? I will just be staring at them for a while and then eventually I'll make the lamp shade day. Okay, I did have a bunch of sewing stuff that I wanted to want oh gosh. I wanted to talk about, but I am struggling with words and I'm struggling with the percentage of battery on this camera and so I think I will hold that back for the next time that we talk because I might be mo, no, I might be more cohesive. Yeah, it's time to stop. <laughs> so, before I go, I just want to say thank you to everybody that have been tagging me in their uh, Instagram posts for my vintage make along. I will put it here, vintage MAL 2024. I'm hosting a small little knit along, craft along, yeah. You can add sewing, crochet, knitting, anything that is vintage between the 1920s and 60s, I suppose. There's no hard and fast rules, it's just a vague guesstimate. I'm hosting a vintage make-along so that we can all see what we're all up to because a lot of the time I get comments saying I'm going to make the same jumper in pink, for example. And I want to see what your jumper looks like. And I think other people would also like to see and get inspiration. So I've seen a lot of chevrons popping up. And you know, I love me a chevron jumper. So those have been popping up. And Instagram is finally showing other people's posts and not just mine. So 
that's a relief. <laughs> and it's also on Ravelry, but I haven't actually checked my Ravelry in a while, so I should, I should do that. I'm not very good with Ravelry, have I mentioned that? Yes I have, but I will try and check that soon. I just don't really go on my computer that very much. That very much. What? I have pinned a post on my Instagram which will link you to a blog post on coffee where I just talk more about this uh, vintage make-along but if you're interested please feel free to tag me and add the hashtag to your Instagram posts and then I can see them and share them and we can all inspire each other with our vintage obsessions. I think that is all I have to say. I am still contemplating if I should just re-record this entire video. <laughs> we'll see. Thank you very much for watching if you got this far and I will see you when I come back from Sweden. If you have any recommendations for where I should visit, any charity shops, thrift stores, anything in particular, do let me know in the comments or send me a message on Instagram and I will look out for it. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.